Sri Lanka's most powerful news brand. Hello there, very good evening to you. You're watching Primetime News. We're coming to you live and direct from the news first video here in Colombo. I'm Stephanie Lazarus. Good evening, I'm Shahin Jarampati. Let's start off with a look at tonight's headlines. Bond Commission report debate to be held on February 20th and 21st. Speaker rejects MP Ravi Karnanayaka's request to make special statement in Parliament. Presidential Commission of Inquiry recommends legal action against Nishan Kasena for the and avant-garde under firearms ordinance. President stands firm. He will not hesitate to rectify mistakes of this government. President Maitri Palasiri Sena says he will not hesitate to correct any wrong committed by his government. President Maitri Pala Sirisena took part in an SLFP campaign meeting in Bakamona today. Politicians came into power and ruined this country through theft, extortion and nepotism. They went on to bring their relatives closer to power. Politicians have caused a massive destruction to this nation. For me, the port city is not important at all. It is a massive investment to the nation. I said I am not willing to sell anything. I said I would not sign the sale of any such document. Take a look at the history of the country. There is no leader in history who had handed over the deed of the nation to another country. The person who did so claims that we are selling the country. Why wasn't it leased? I told them to change the agreement and I will sign it. Thereafter, the agreement was changed. That is how we work. They misled the people and portrayed themselves as heroes. The war was won, but did he do it alone? King Dutugamuna won the war with the ten giants by his side. Never forget that. We were the giants who supported Mahindra Rajapaksa to win the war. Today, how many of them remain over there? All of those in cabinet back then are now with me. They are in the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. After the war victory in 2010, my friend Mahindra Rajapaksa changed in an unprecedented way. He forgot about us. He kicked aside his ten giants. He moved us all aside and only held discussions with the family. That was how he started to rule. I took over to bring a change in this country. If I am not in this seat in this government, I am aware where this country will be heading to. In 1906, the colonial rulers imposed a rule banning women from purchasing liquor from bars and selling liquor. These people do not understand what the foreigners understood a century ago. That law was changed. We removed the gazette. The people elected me as the president considering the program I steered as a minister of health against drugs. They had faith in me. We cannot allow any wrong to take place, no matter from what party that person comes from. I must make it clear to you. We start a battle on the 10th. This is for a better local government body, a better provincial council. This is for a better parliament. The country needs a president who does not steal. This country cannot be developed because of indiscipline and corrupt politics. <laughs> The Speaker today denied parliamentarian Ravi Karnanayaka from making a special statement in Parliament. Our correspondent said the Speaker informed the MP that he cannot raise a privilege question today as it does not relate to a privilege issue. MP Karnanayaka has said if he is not allowed to make a statement, he would make a public statement outside Parliament. Our correspondent said... MP Karanayaka's media officer thereafter moved to a location where journalists were and handed over a copy of the MP's statement. In the statement, MP Karanayaka had noted there is no evidence to show he was involved in malpractices in the purchase and sale of bonds with primary dealers in the bond market. The party leaders at a special meeting today have agreed to debate the report of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the bond issue on the 20th and the 21st of next month. Yet another debate broke out in Parliament today over the number of pages in the report. Yesterday, the President made a public statement claiming the report contained around 6,000 pages. But the publication you gave us does not contain 6,000 pages. There will be no debate if there are less pages. There cannot be a debate until it is solved. I spoke to the Secretary to the President. Permit me to read out the answer given. When preparing this report, the Commission received a large volume of documents. There is a need to keep them secure. Documents are provided in bundles and in box files. And it was informed to me by the former Secretary of the Commission. He has been working with the 
government printer over the past few days to bind those documents together. I have not been given those books as yet. I was informed today he will be able to provide three volumes today. If that is done, based on priority, they will be handed over to the law enforcement agencies. And this has been informed to the former secretary. Based on the instructions given by the Attorney General, those volumes will be handed over to me and the President's secretary on a later date. When this issue arose yesterday, you announced all reports handed over to the President's secretary were handed over to Parliament. Today, you receive another letter claiming there are more documents. We need to ask this question from the Secretary to the President. Therefore, please summon him to Parliament. This problem can be solved if the relevant officers are summoned here, obtain a clarification and act accordingly. How can we have a successful debate without a complete report? This is an issue regarding the people of this country. There needs to be successful debate on this. We will not allow anything to be concealed and be swept under the carpet. All reports on the Bond Commission will be produced and all measures will be taken against everyone who is found accountable. Before this house was given the report, some members of the UNP were given this report. The report was not given to any politician before it was tabled in Parliament. The Presidential Commission of Inquiry, which investigates into serious acts of fraud and corruption, has recommended criminal charges against 13 people over irregular transactions with regard to Avangard and Rakhna Arakshakalanka. They include former Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksa, former Additional Defence Secretary Damayanti Jayaratna, and Avangard Chairman Nisanka Senadipati. The Commission states those who have served in state institutions are not suitable to hold public office anymore. Adding the investigation material needs to be sent to the Attorney General and the Bribery Commission to initiate criminal action. According to the recommendations, action is sought against former Defence Secretary Gotabe Raj Paksa, former Additional Defence Secretary Damayanti Jayaratna, Chairman of Avant Guard Nishanka Senadipati, former Chairman of Rakna Arakshakalanka Major General Palita Fernando and Major General K.B. Egodovela. In addition, the Commission recommends criminal action against Rohana Veera De Zoiza, former Minister Rohita Bogol Agama, former Mayors Danasiri Amaratunga, Janaka Ranavaka, former MP Duminda Silva, Provincial Councillor Upali Kodikara, Jayanta Pereira and Jayanath Kolombage. The Presidential Commission observes Avant Garde and Rakna Arakshakalanka had entered into various agreements and thereby costing the government a considerable revenue that would have been raised from the maritime security services provided by the Sri Lanka Navy. The report states this had been committed by appointing close associates to positions in Rakna Arakshakalanka, which is registered under the Sri Lanka Companies Act. The commission reveals Rakna Arakshakalanka was in possession of 3,473 automatic rifles without a valid license. The commission finds there was only a permit issued by Gotabe Raj Paksa to Palita Fernando over the sale and transfer of these weapons in question. It states, letters had been exchanged between former Additional Defence Secretary Damayanti Jayaratna and Palita Fernando with regard to these weapons. The Commission recommends the recovery of money as licence fee for the weapons used by Rakna Arakshakalanka, which functions as a state enterprise. It also says Avangard has used 17 imported firearms without a licence for the purpose of training maritime security officers. It adds, training and issuing of fitness certificates was done by the Katakurunda Police Special Task Force camp. Former Additional Defence Secretary Damayanti Jayaratna has issued the permits for the use of these weapons in question. The Presidential Commission recommends legal action be taken against Avangard and its chairman Nishanka Senadipati under the Firearms Ordinance for the use of weapons without a valid licence. Gotabe Raj Paksa and Damayanti Jayaratna had permitted the training of maritime security officers at the police STF base and some facts were revealed in the statements made by Raj Paksa himself. The Commission says though action can be taken against Gotabe Raj Paksa, Nisanki Sainadipati and Damayanti Jayaratna under the penal code, further investigations are required over the revelations uncovered from the statements made by Raj Paksa. The Commission recommends legal action under the Bribery Act against K.B. Egodavela, Palita Fernando, Rohana Veera De Zoisa, Danasiri Amaratunga, Dumita Silva, Janaka Ranavaka and Upali Kodikara for using employees at Rakna Arakshakalanka for political engagements. The Presidential Commission says the loss suffered by the government as a result of the actions of these individuals is 7 million. The report on large-scale corruption in the country was presented to Parliament. I'm going to draw your attention to one of the reports, the Avangard case, which began in 2010 when Sarat Fonseca 
was contesting for the presidential election. Now, though it was not proven by any law enforcement authority in the country, there were widespread allegations that Sarat Fonseca at the time was being held by force at a hotel in Colombo and there was an attempt to launch a coup in the country if the election did not go as per the aspirations of the former government. Similar stories were heard when President Maitri Pal Sirisena was also contesting the elections this time around in 2015. Soon after the presidential election in 2015, the controversial avant-garde floating armory was seized by the Sri Lanka Navy. The floating armory was flying a Sri Lankan flag. The details of the crew and the captain were false at the time. To make matters worse, this ship was carrying illegal weapons. To be more precise, there were 17 weapons without any serial numbers. Now, there were reports later that a military training camp was held at the STF camp in Katukurunda and there were foreign nationals who participated at this military training exercise. Now, the 17 weapons that we're talking about were also used in this Katukurunda STF camp military training session with the participation of foreign nationals. Now, question number one. Why were the details of the crew members of the avant-garde ship false in the first place? Were they, part, were they part of a conspiracy? Were they part of a conspiracy to use mercenaries if the election did not go in favour as some people would have wanted? If it was so, who was behind this treasonous activity? We all know that the weapons ordinance in our country is quite strong. Some of you might know the paperwork that you have to put in, you have to fill to get a weapon registered under your name. If you are in a village, if you have a weapon that you uh, have purchased without registering it, you know if you are arrested, the law will take its course in a very, very strong way. You cannot play around with the law when it comes to the uh, weapons ordinance of our country. But here, with regard to the avant-garde case, there are 17 weapons that have not been registered. Let me take you back to 2015 again. A letter was sent by the Attorney General to the Inspector General of Police asking or saying rather that action cannot be taken or legal action, a case cannot be filed under the weapons ordinance with regard to these 17 weapons back in the day. Now we all remember the pictures uh, that came out depicting the former Minister of Justice with Nisanka Senadipati. We also remember how a certain minister, uh, Mr. Tilak Marapana, had to resign. He is now holding a foreign ministerial portfolio, but he had to resign back in the day with regard to this controversy. The government promised that action would be taken against such malpractices, including the avant-garde case. There were illegal weapons. The military tra a military training program was held with the participation of foreign nationals, and we know that these 17 weapons uh, were used in it. The current government has the details as to who is involved in it. Why isn't anyone being arrested. Now, corruption is not reserved for the previous government as we have become aware through various practices that have happened in our country, but it is particularly shocking when the victim of these cases is the humble farmer. They become the victim, victim of all of these corruption that is happening in the country. Tonight, we have some serious allegations or serious questions that should be raised with the Minister of Economic, Rural Economic Affairs. And here is the story. With the aim to increase fresh milk production in Sri Lanka, New Zealand and Australia sent 3,024 pregnant cows to Sri Lanka. Farmers were invited to apply for a minimum of 10 cows each. 1,635 cows were allocated for farmers that successfully met the requirements stipulated in the open invitation. 340 cows were given to the National Livestock Development Board or the NLDB. This left 1,049 cows unaccounted for. A pregnant cow is valued at 467,000 rupees. The concessionary price for farmers is 200,000 rupees. Where are the 1,049 cows worth 209,800,000 rupees? Minister, where are the missing 1,049 cows?
speaking at a public meeting in Mathura yesterday, leader of the JVP MP Anur Kumar Disanayake was highly critical of both the previous and present governments. During the term of Mahinda Rajapaksa, Sri Lankan Airlines signed an agreement with a French company to purchase four aircraft. A request was made to have a special room in one of the planes. So after Mahinda lost, this government thought there is no use for these aircraft and they cancelled the order at a cost of 18 billion rupees. So there was theft when signing the agreement and terminating the agreement. Has a single minister been jailed in these 70 years? No. Does this mean that none of them have stolen? They won't be punished like that because all of them are close friends. When the sugar factory in Hingran was sold, there were 600 acres of sugarcane machines and there was sugar in storage as well. Sugar at the factory was sold for much less than the sugar in storage. When Maitri Palasri Sena came to power, he said the airport will be closed so the thieves cannot escape. But was that done? No. A sum of 599.3 million rupees was allocated for Anil Vikramasinghe to buy two cars. One car cost 300 million and two of them are bought. When they go on a journey, they go into helicopters. It is understandable if you go in two cars. So when there is a flat tyre in one car, you can switch the other. But why two helicopters? Now our army headquarters was taken to Palawatta. It's going to cost 40 billion to construct it. There was a land and a hospital in that location. After selling all of that, there still isn't enough money to construct the army headquarters. The FIFA World Cup made its first stop in Colombo on its global trophy tour prior to this year's tournament. The trophy was presented to the president this morning, after which it was on public display till 2 p.m. today. The 2018 FIFA World Cup trophy was handed over to President Maitripala Sirisena at the President's house in Colombo. The trophy, which will visit 91 cities across 51 countries, will return to Russia in May, just in time for the World Cup, due to kick-off on the 7th of June. The event was graced by Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe, Sports Minister Daya Sri Jayasekara, France 1998 World Cup winner and FIFA Ambassador Christian Karembu, and the President of the Football Federation, Anura de Silva. The trophy will now embark on the rest of the tour, starting with the Maldives tomorrow. The much-awaited Gaul Literary Festival kicked off today in the premises of the Gaul Fort, and authors from around the world uh, gathered in Gaul for this mega event, of which the media sponsor is MTV and NBC. Tasun Yathauda joins us with the details now. Hello and a very good evening to all our viewers. I'm currently at the Golf Fort where the 2018 Golf Literary Festival is taking place. Now happening for the ninth time here at Golf, this festival this year will see the participation of both local and global artists, poets, actresses as well as musicians for five full days so the opening ceremony just got underway a few minutes ago and uh, this is an event where you and your family can both enjoy and indulge yourself in global as well as local music drama and poetry that's it for now stay tuned to news first for the latest for the news first team i'm dasni atava signing off from the golf fort Thank you very much, Dasuni. In other local news, a Sinhala translation of the book Samudra Mantan, penned by Dr. C. Rajamohan, was launched in Colombo today. Citing a tale from Hindu mythology, Samudra Mantan, or Churning the Ocean, relates the story of Sino-Indian rivalry spilling over from the Great Himalayas into the Indian and Pacific Oceans. The launch saw the participation of the Indian High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, Taranjit Singh Sandhu, as well as the Chairman of the Pathfinder Foundation, Bernard Gunatilaka. Samudra Mantan was translated into Sinhalese by Sunetra Sirivartana, which also includes the Sri Lankan perspective by Professor Sisira Pinnavala. Yeah, grateful for the Pathfinder Foundation for uh, translating uh, Samudra Mantan into Sinhalak and to release it uh, today uh, to the uh, to the Sri Lankan public. The book looks at uh, the uh, the need for greater engagement, a greater partnership between the major powers as well as uh, uh, between China and India and within the uh, Indian and the Pacific Oceans. So it talks about uh, the possibility for the emergence of a new security order in the Indo-Pacific and uh, uh, looks at the implications for all the countries in the in the literature. Indonesian President Joko Widodo arrived in the country for a two-day state visit on the invitation of President Maitri Pala Sirisena. The Indonesian president is accompanied by a 50-member strong delegation during this visit. They were welcomed at the airport by Foreign Affairs Minister Tilak Marapana. 
Singaporean Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong concluded his official visit to Sri Lanka and left the island this evening. Prior to his departure, Prime Minister Lee held talks with opposition leader R Sampanthan as well. The 59th annual general meeting of the National Chamber of Commerce of Sri Lanka was held in Colombo yesterday. Sujiv Samarvira was re-elected as president of the National Chamber of Commerce. The ceremonial session of the event was graced by Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. We have to think big. <coughs> Don't think small. So our idea is in the next decade let's open out. And once we open out let our businesses go ahead. Don't ever be frightened. The government finally wants Sri Lankan businesses. Politics is necessary in a democratic country. But it must not in any way hinder the development. Foreign investment is never a hindrance to growth. We don't suffer because foreign investment coming. <coughs> foreign investment brings in additional opportunities for us to make money. It brings in technology. It brings in marketing skills. It brings in management. So that's how we are going to expand. Every measure we take means more Sri Lankans make money. But you have to be outward looking, outward looking economy. An outward looking eco you know, economy with dynamic Sri Lankan enterprises will make us grow. The Sri Lanka Singapore Business Forum was held in Colombo today. The event was organized by the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce and the Sri Lanka Singapore Business Council. Attracting foreign investment is a key priority for our country right now. The Board of Investment is now reorienting itself to become much more responsive to investors' needs and it is headed by private sector leaders to leverage our location and expand market access. We are signing a number of trade agreements with other countries. We also hope to begin negotiations for FTA with Malaysia and uh, Thailand. When the FTA is enforced, Sri Lankan importers will be able to benefit significantly as customs duties are reduced in phases over the next few years for goods imported from Singapore. This will also benefit Sri Lankan consumers, increasing the variety, range and the affordability of variety of high quality products. Already we are seeing significant momentum in our bilateral economic ties. From 2016 to 2017, bilateral trade between Sri Lanka and Singapore increased by more than 25% to 300 billion Sri Lankan rupees. Our bilateral trade in services and foreign direct investments also show an upward trend. Sri Lanka is also an attractive market for Singapore's small and medium-sized enterprises. And Several bilateral agreements between Sri Lankan and Singaporean companies were signed during the event. The Singaporean Minister for Trade and Industry took part in a panel discussion last night as well. Seven and a member of the cabinet. So that's a wrap of Primetime News. I'm Stephanie Lazarus. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Shahin Jarampati. Good night and take care. Thank you.